Today I want to welcome you back and we've been having a very difficult, very emotional discussion surrounding the five word phrase that is probably one of the most wicked things that you could say to your spouse in recovery. It's the, it's never enough for you phrase and it's diabolical. It is so many things that I've already said. So if you're just joining us today, I really want to ask you to go back and watch the first two video blogs because it will give you so much more context. If you refuse to do that, listen away. It's going to be great. But I want to tell you today how to get beyond the whole phrase and mentality of it's never enough for you. You'll be happy to know I don't have a million different ways and all that different stuff to do it. I'm not going to exhaust you with all these different kind of if you'll just do, you know, five steps to recovery or six steps to it's never enough for you or, you know, seven ways to overcome it's never enough for you. I'm just not that organized. I've already had a difficult moment um, this morning. I've already had a long morning. I'm going to be just very honest with you and I'm going to tell you uh, what I really believe are the ways to do it. But I'm not going to promise perfection. If you've watched enough of these, you, <laughs> you probably shout a big amen. We've watched enough, Samuel. We get it. I think, in large part, one of the main reasons that we are so quick to, it's never enough for you, and fire back, is that we aren't really connected. We are, at least Samantha and I, get lost in the smoke screen. The smoke screen is incredibly overpowering, or the fog, if you will, is incredibly overpowering because we are tapping into each other's issues. We are dealing with our own inadequacy. When I say it's never enough for you, I'm really dealing with me. And it's the same thing for Samantha. We're fighting and getting locked in, in battle about all these things that we are wrestling with ourselves. I'm fighting my own battle, so then you say something to ramp up my battle. So rather than like turn inward and say, man, I've got some issues. I say, it's never enough for you. It's you. It's you. It's certainly not me. It's you, 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 because I want to feel better about myself. But the reality is we are not connected. And just a few minutes ago, uh, my producer and I, we were laughing about I don't know if you've seen the meme, if you will, from the notebook where um, this guy looks at this woman and he says, what do you want? And she's crying and says, it's not that. He goes, what do you want? I think we can learn so much because in reality, we're trying to understand what each other wants, but we don't know how to get it. And so what I've learned to do is when Samantha and I are having these moments, I really try, and I'm not perfect. But I really try and stay humble before God and before Samantha and say to her something like, what am I not seeing because I really want to make you feel secure. But I'm not getting it. Like, what is so important about this? Or, and, I, and that's, you have to be careful. It's not, what's so important about this? You'll get shot. It's, what am I missing here that would help me understand what this means to you. Or I, I try and kind of go to a point of, I'm obviously missing it, and I, I just need you to help me understand what this made you feel, or why this made you feel the way it did. When I revert to a, well, this is your issue, not mine. Shoot, it, 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 no. This is my issue because it's her issue. What affects you affects me. What's your issue, unfaithful or betrayed, affects me. So I need to remain humble. I need to not let myself go down the journey of self-hatred, confusion, insecurity, inadequacy, anger, pride, childhood issues, and all of that. Hence the reason for you to do your own recovery work as well to get healed. But in this moment, I have to be able to go, hold on, no, 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 no. I'm not going down that road. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to be 
humble, contrite, and I'm just going to say, Samantha, I love you. I'm a train wreck. I, I don't see everything. Help me. And I may have to say, look, if we need to take a time out, we will, but can you just help me? Like, I'm not hearing you exactly. And so at that point, if she's really fuming, it's hard, but she'll kind of back down a little bit. Or if she's not, you know, that angry, she'll, she'll kind of go, okay, here's what I'm saying. And we learn to fight well. We, we learn to be able to communicate in a way where I can see the issue and not get lost in all my issues, but I can say to her, case in point, long time ago, uh, she read an email, she flipped out, and I had to say something like this to her. I said, okay, I get it. That email was bad, but I'm trying to get this woman to, at the time, buy a house, and she seems to be ghost, and I can't get her to respond to my email, so I'm afraid that she already bought a house and didn't use me, so I'm trying to get her to respond. It was terrible verbiage. It was terrible um, communication. You're welcome to search through all of my email and read every email that I've ever sent her or she sent me. I promise you I've never deleted anything, but you're welcome to get software if you want, whatever you need to do, but I need you to know that I understand how dumb that was, and I, I hate that you feel the way that you feel, but I am not going anywhere. I'm right here, and I want to hear. And so another thing to do is to be able to say, you, Samantha, probably feel worried, inadequate, concerned. Is this all over again going to happen? And have I relapsed and all this stuff? When we, the unfaithful, are able to communicate in a way that says, you probably feel X, or you probably are feeling this, or you probably want this, I believe that it really helps the betrayed spouse feel like you are getting it and that you have empathy because you are putting yourself in the position of the betrayed and you are trying to feel what they are feeling and communicate out of that, which is empathy or remorse. You see, let me back away and give you the wide-angle lens. What's happening is we're triggering each other. And so it's never enough for you, triggers her, and her own stuff, and then she lashes out, and then I get triggered, and now we're just, man, back and forth, back and forth. It's a big ping-pong match or a tennis match of blame and defensiveness and justification, and we're trying to make each other the problem rather than understanding that we are probably, in many cases, the problem. We're triggering each other's shame. One of the ways that we get clarity is we do some real intense work on ourselves. Now immediately, I just heard the voice of one spouse say, well, what if they won't do recovery work about their own issues? Sucks, but you have to work on you, regardless of what they're doing. Sometimes, by working on you, you promote security in the heart and in the mind of your spouse, and they will get vulnerable and then allow themselves to get worked on by whatever professional or book or approach you take. But sometimes, especially the betrayed spouse, isn't going to do a lot of recovery work until they see you do the recovery work that you have to do because then they feel safer. And then they feel like you're doing work and then they'll begin to get vulnerable about them. But they won't ever get vulnerable about them until you take ownership and stop blaming and stop defending and stop making it everybody else's problem until you unfaithful work on you with a legitimate desperation to get healthy, they will never let their guard down and start to really work on them. I tell betrayed spouses all the time, one of the best things that you can do, even in the face of uncertainty, is do recovery work for you. Work on your own healing. I don't know what that is. Everyone's fighting a different battle. You may or may not be dealing with self-esteem. You may or may not deal with self-hatred. You may or may not deal with a large amount of insecurity. I don't know, because every situation is different. But you don't need to sit back and just wait. You can do work for you. You can work on you. It's never enough for you is 
really an excuse to make your spouse the problem rather than getting beyond the fog and confusion and just saying, you know what, I want to help you in this moment. I want to be malleable and sensitive to what you're facing. If we need to talk later, let's talk later, but what is the core issue that you want me to hear? Finally, one of the ways to diffuse the it's never enough for you is to be able to validate the efforts of your partner. When Samantha would say to me, I know you're working hard, I know you're, you're scared about money. I know that starting over is rough. I know that you are trying to be the best dad and the best father and, and the best husband that you can be. When she validates me, I go, oh, she's getting it. Okay, she sees the hard work and the efforts that I'm really doing. Even if she says, I, I know all these things that you're doing, but I have to help you understand that I, I'm feeling X, Y, and Z. When she does that, I'm far more open and far less triggered to be able to say, okay, she gets that I'm doing all this work, but yet I still need to be brave and courageous and secure and work on whatever this issue is. And the same thing goes for the betray. There's a moment when you're further down the road and you feel like you can have these conversations where maybe the unfaithful can say, look, I know you're working on your triggers and the, the emotion and the reminders and the pain of it all, but I, I just need to communicate to you that sometimes I feel like you don't understand the war that I'm battling. And I, I just want to appeal to you to be sensitive about my struggle with X, Y, or Z. You're validating the fact that you understand the betrayed's journey, yet you are bringing up a struggle that you are having. Now, early on, it may be too tough to even do that, but as you gain some momentum and as you get the right help, I'm confident that you'll be able to have those conversations. Mm -hmm.